All right, welcome back. Episode two of the paper. Um, we got a good episode for you guys today. As usual, we're gonna go finance first with me, Costa. Then we're gonna get, jump into some sports news um, with Will. And then finally, we're gonna wrap it up with some uh, personal health tips with TC. So just jumping into my section, the finance section. We're gonna go over some, just some bond basics for you guys today. So last episode, we talked a little bit about stocks and equity investments. Today we're going to talk more about bonds and more fixed income, the fixed income field, um, asset class, I guess is a better word for it. So anyways, essentially what you have with a bond is you as the investor are loaning money to a company. Um, it could be a government, a municipality, which is like um, a local kind of like, a, I guess local government. So like basically your township or your city or something like that. Um, states also have bonds. There's international bonds. So there's, there's a lot of different um, categories and you're gonna see through our discussion that you can go really, really deep with it and you guys can kind of do your own research um, in that field because I'm just gonna touch on the basics because otherwise we'd be here for about six hours, so. Um, yeah, so just going over some base, real basic stuff. Like I said, you go, kind of um, buy the company's debt. So they issue bonds, you buy them as the events, investor. Essentially what you're doing is lending your money out to them. Um, and they can use the money as they would, uh, as similar to like an equity investment, they use the money to kind of finance new projects, um, keep their ongoing projects going, keep their operations going, uh, maybe fund an acquisition. I'm not too sure how often acquisitions get funded through debt, but that's a, that's a possibility as well. Um, yeah, jump into new markets, grow their business. Um, yeah. So ba you, so you said they're buying the debt. So yeah. that mean so that would like decrease the amount of, uh, like that decreases the amount of debt they have when you so like, issue no, bonds? I guess I phrased that a little incorrectly. Essentially what they do is they go into debt and oh. you're giving them the money. Okay. So like essentially when you like think about it like this, like when you get a mortgage, it. right? Mm -hmm. You go into debt, you borrow money from the bank. Mm -hmm. The bank gives you cash right away. Yeah. Then you just have to pay it back over time. Right. right? Just flip that around and t t uh, take the bank so as you're the, the bank right you're the bank right okay. so you're giving the money to the company they use that cash to do whatever they want to do right um actually not whatever they want to do they have to draw up like a prospectus and like tell you what they're going to do with it and then that's part of your investment decision is if you want to fund that okay um and then over time they have to pay you back so this is what i was just about to get into so with stocks we talked about a little bit about dividends and how a company doesn't necessarily have to pay you a dividend mm -hmm. that's basically that's their decision and you can't do anything about it really mm -hmm. i mean you could take steps like vote people out and in and out of management like things like that but for the most part they don't have any legal um liability to pay you i don't know if liability is the right word there but whatever so with bonds there they they have to pay you an interest payment mm -hmm. yeah, so most of them are either semi-annually uh, quarterly there's some that are monthly but because don't if they don't pay you they go you bankrupt. force them into bankruptcy yeah. yeah yeah so they end up paying you more over the long run than they end up borrowing mm -hmm. initially that's why you invest exactly. in it because you're going to make more money interest um but yeah, so that's a really important thing about bonds is that um, you they have to pay you that interest. If mm -hmm. they don't pay you that interest, you can force the bondholders can force bankruptcies, um, but stockholders, like we said, can't because they don't really owe you thing, anything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, just some terms that are kind of thrown around when you're talking about bonds: par value. Usually, this is about this is either one hundred or a thousand dollars. Also, this is called face value. So this is the, the amount that they have to pay you back um, at the end of the okay. bond's maturity, at the end of the maturity. Yeah, um, maturity is another one. That's how long the bond lasts. So if I have a six month maturity bond, they'll pay me my money back at the end of six months, the principal. 
the principal is the initial amount that they borrow that they borrow mm -hmm. so um, so they borrow like say they borrow ten million dollars in thousand dollar bonds the principal is that is that thousand um, dollars so par value face value and uh, principal are all syn synonyms they're all the same um, Coupon rate, that's um, the interest payment. That's how much the interest payment is going to be. So if it's a $1,000 bond, 10% uh, interest payment, what's that, 100 bucks? Yeah. So they'll pay you 100 bucks every, every, interest, uh, every interest payment that's due. Um, let's see, what else? Grades. Investment bonds. grades, yep. So... Um, Investment grade bonds are considered anything that's rated above triple B. So that's triple A, double A, A, triple B. Anything above that is considered an investment grade, which just means for the most part, those companies will pay the money back. So the ratings agencies, mm -hmm. not to get off on too much of a tangent here, but there's there's entities called the rating ratings agencies that go through and assess like the credit quality of different companies and governments. I think, I believe they do governments as well. Um, but then they come out with a rating. So like I said, AAA is basically the best you're gonna get, or it is the bit best you're gonna get. Um, and that just means that they have the most capacity to pay the loan yeah. back, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so the rating is based on how like, like, like you said, how likely right. you are to get paid back. Yeah, they take into account like how much liquidity they have. Um, like they go through their balance sheet, all their uh, in incomes, to all their financial statements, mm -hmm. and they just essentially like how likely are they going to pay you right. back? And then kind of like what we were talking about before the podcast about endowments and how right. they don't um, invest in non-investment grade because mm -hmm. they're not likely to get paid back and right like we were talking about um for an endowment you need to have that you mm -hmm. know secured income so that's why they yeah and that, that goes back to like one of the most basic things in finance is risk versus reward right mm -hmm. so if you're investing in investment grade bonds which we're going to get into that later normally as an individual investor which i'm assuming I mean, I know we all are, and I'm assuming most of our listeners are going to be individual investors. You wouldn't normally invest in straight up bonds because mm -hmm. you have to buy them in like, I think ten thousand yeah. dollar like increments. like you have to yeah increments. Yeah. So, but just jump me back. So, investment grade bonds, right? Those are going to offer the least amount of risk, but they're also going to offer the least amount of reward. Mm -hmm. So they don't need to pay you as much interest because you, it's Good. safer. Yeah. Right. And bonds are kind of like a more safe investment. Anyway, yeah, just right? in just yeah. just in general, because of that fact that they have to pay you, mm -hmm. otherwise you force bankruptcy and you get a claim on the assets. So right. either way, you're gonna make some money. It's just a matter of if you're gonna make all your money back more than you spend, mm -hmm. basically earning a return, mm -hmm. or you get kind of somewhere underneath how much you've invested. Um, but yeah, so jumping back to the ratings. Anything under B or anything under triple B, so that'd be double B, B, uh, there's C, B, and D. Um, those are considered like, sometimes they call them high yield junk bonds. Um, there's another one that I forget right now. Is it speculative or no? Um, I don't think they use speculative often. There's, there's like, there's one other one that I'm forgetting right now. But anyway, so those are like, like I said, high yield. That means you're risking a little bit more the fact that you probably won't not probably but you might not get paid like like back in full less. right but you're making more money on mm -hmm. the long run if you do get paid back right. so again risk versus reward and that's that's a common theme throughout all the finance it's that and time value of money so a dollar a day is worth more than a dollar tomorrow because you can invest it um yeah coupon rate we talked about that that's how much interest you're going to make uh, so say a five percent bond or a five percent coupon on a thousand dollar bond that's fifty bucks. That's stated annually too. So remember, a five percent coupon bond paid semi annually is going to give you twenty five dollars every six months. Right. So you cut the you cut the interest rate in half. Right. Because it's semi annual. Right. Yeah. Quarterly that would be fifty divided by four. 
So whatever that is, I can't do that math in my head. <laughs> twelve and a half. Twelve and a half. Yeah. yeah. Um, maturity date. That's how long the bond's going to last. Um, when it matures, that's when they need to pay you your principal back, and they get a they get another interest payment on top of that. So, again, jump me back to our our example. Five percent bond. On that maturity date, they pay you one thousand fifty dollars. Makes sense. Um, let's see what else we got. Categories. Talk about that. There's corporate, municipalities. Um, most of the time, municipalities the interest payments are tax deductible, so that's another advantage. Of those, but I don't think many people invest in those just because I don't think you get a very good return. Um, government bonds. So issued by the treasury um they use they use that to fund most of the time they fund their 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 debt so they're just taking on more debt which is not to get too political but there's a whole discussion about that like how much the government can go into debt because they can just print more money but we won't get into that that's for that's for another day <laughs> um and then agency bonds those don't those aren't like a huge um category um, zero coupon bonds. So this is kind of an interesting um, arena. So there's certain bonds that are just straight up zero coupons. So they won't pay you any, any interest, mm -hmm. and that's stated. But they sell at a discount. So you buy them for like nine hundred bucks, and then at the maturity you get a thousand bucks. So you okay. make that hundred bucks, or it might be like nine hundred twenty-two dollars, whatever they, mm -hmm. whatever the market thinks is like a good price for that. Um, convertible bonds and if you guys have like questions to share you want to talk something yeah, out just sure. let me know um, convertible bonds so that's essentially I buy a, uh, a bond and that has the option to um, you can convert it into a stock so the company does really well you probably want to take that option yeah. I'm not too familiar on how those work like options and things like that but um, yeah callable bonds and puttable bonds so a callable is when the company can call it back so if they start feeling like they can't make their interest payments and they might have bankruptcy if the their bonds are callable they can just call it back and they don't have to pay the interest anymore okay. a puttable bond is essentially the reverse mm. the, the investor can force the bond back to the to the company so there's different scenarios where that, that may be an advantage or a disadvantage um, depending on what side you're on, investor or corporation, and how the company's doing, mm -hmm. a lot of different factors, how the economy's doing. Right. Um, yeah, pricing bonds, that's a little um, intricate, but essentially you come up with some sort of discount rate, um, depending on like the riskiness. Again, that's that, that's that risk versus return discussion. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, so, so any like, oh, one also thing I want to say before we get to kind of a more discussion, um, the yield to maturity is something to pay attention to, too. So that works in opposite as the price. So a lot of times when you're reading a, uh, an article in like the Wall Street Journal or something like that, they'll talk about the bonds and the yields going up mm -hmm. and then they'll say bond yields and prices move in opposite, opposite direction. So the yield goes up because when I buy that bond at a lower price and I get paid back at that same thousand dollars, I'm making more, more yeah. right? So as the yield goes up, the price is going down, that's good. Okay. Unless you're holding that bond, then it's not good for you right. because the price is going down, but, um, and you can't sell it at a higher price. So that's important to notice. Um, and then obviously when the yield goes down, the price is going, going up. up because you can buy it at a higher price, but you're only gonna pay back that thousand dollars. Yeah, so that so that means it wouldn't really be a good investment or? Uh, it depends on what you're looking for. Like, it wouldn't be a good investment as compared to like if it had a higher yield. Right. And it's all the same thing, but there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of different, um, it depends on like your investment strategy or like um, how risky you think the bond is or just your pricing scheme. Um, but yeah, yeah. But Te yeah. Technically, like you're not gonna make as much. I'll say yeah. that. I wouldn't say it's a good, good or bad investment because mm -hmm. there's a lot of factors. But yeah. So um, one thing you said is like if you're an individual investor, right? Like you said, um, you probably don't want to buy like bonds. Yeah. Because it's like 
like you said, a thousand dollars for a bond, and then if it's only like the risk to reward isn't really that great. Uh, something our like finance professor said was bond funds. Right. So that's yeah, like yeah, a, that, like yeah. a group of um, yeah of bonds. So it's like essentially what that is is just like a mutual fund made up of all exactly. bond investments. Yeah. So like if you're an individual investor, like I said, you have to put up a lot of initial capital to get invested in a, in a straight up bond. Like I'm mm-hmm. buying that bond and then. But bond funds can give you the same exposure, and it's a lot cheaper. So, like, there's mutual funds that are just built of, built up, of straight bond investments, mm-hmm. and that um, can give you that exposure. Um, so yeah, that those are really powerful too because they're they're perfect for like an individual investor or a retail investor. Okay. So, oh Brittany just walked in, so. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I don't know what our time is at right now, but, um, those are basically the bond basics, basically what about bond interest basics. rates. Um, so the interest rate is, like I said, it's the interest rate is the same as the coupon rate. No, no, no. Like when interest rates go up, bonds and prices are going to go down. Oh yeah. I, I think that is like the discount rate so like when you price bonds you it's like pretty intricate but you kind of map out the cash flow so initially we're gonna get negative a thousand dollars on our cash flow map so that's the initial price or negative like 900 we'll just say right because I'm investing in that bond then every six months I'm gonna get 50 bucks so I map those all out 50 bucks 50 bucks 50 bucks and we'll go for like We'll just say it's like a two-year bond. So what would that be? Six months? It'd be 200. No, that'd be four pay- four interest payments. So every six months for two years, four interest payments. 50 bucks. Then at the end, like I said, you get that extra one. Or that'd be three. Jesus Christ. All right, so negative 900 on the cash flow. Then 50, 50, 50. Then 1,050. Oh, and then, okay, okay. so that's, that's the entire cash flow of the bond. Mm-hmm. Then you take all those, you discount them all back to the present year, present value, which you guys are, if you haven't gotten into that, you'll get into it yeah. in, in the finance class because that's pretty basic stuff. Um, and then that's what the price is. So like say the discount rate goes up or the interest rate goes up, the, the bond's gonna be worth less because you're dividing by a bigger number. If it goes down, then the bond's gonna be worth more because you're dividing by a smaller number. It's gonna be, you have to pay more for it. I should, I should say so that's what interest rates are and there's a lot like I said there's a lot of interest intricacies and I'm no expert but that's the extent of my knowledge <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, yeah I feel like bonds are kind of I mean obviously they're not like the I guess you could say sexiest investment yeah. because yeah the, that's the definitely word is not really and then just like you were saying, you it requires you to have a lot of like capital up front. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for beginning investors like ourselves, and I'm sure like everybody that listens to us, um, like that they're not gonna really have the capital to. Mm-hmm. And then like when you're starting off, you probably are more risk adverse. Yep. And you want like those yep. higher returns. Definitely so. true. Yeah, my like personally, I'm 100% equities. Mm-hmm. So my portfolio is straight up stock like Mm -hmm. it's mutual funds but it's straight up stock mutual funds and the reason for that is i have a long time horizon yeah so i can take volatility early on and as i as i get older i'm gonna obviously start shifting some of that into bonded bond funds or maybe even cash if i want to get really conservative but for now if you're 18 19 20 basically until you're 30 you can stay straight and again this is not investment advice by any means but for myself that's kind of my strategy is stay equities for good long while get that extra return and then start shifting into more safe investments Mm -hmm. so that's all true though what you what you said is like you want that extra return and you want that extra ri- riskiness while you're young and your time horizon's long because you, you can make, make more it money. up. Yeah, make more money. 
and you can take a drop off like if the stock market tanks you have the time to make that back up yeah. and a higher high like we talked about last last episode mm-hmm. um but yeah that's all true yeah so yeah <laughs> that's, that's kind of all i had on bonds yeah. like i said bonds and like you said bonds aren't like the sexy investment by any means but it definitely is a big part chunk of the economy a big part of investing so it's good to just at least have some basic knowledge mm-hmm. which i hope i kind of yeah. elaborated on because like you were saying on the yields like if you like those can kind of indicate where the economy is yep and, yep and, and that's that's a that could be like an indicator to other things maybe not just like you're investing in them but it's good to have some knowledge on them and where they kind of stand mm-hmm. yeah and that's a big um indicator too is like treasury bonds are considered really safe because the government can't default right like it can't go out of business it'll just print more money yeah, yeah, like yeah. and especially with the dollar being the reserve currency all their bonds are issued in dollars they can just uh, actually i don't know if that's true i don't know if all of them are but majority of them are invested in or issued in dollars so they can just print more money and pay the interest payments mm-hmm. so my point is when people start investing more in treasuries and the yields going down remember because mm-hmm. the price going up yields going down right that means that they're kind of getting into more safe assets. It's considered a safe haven. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and so they, they think that the economy might start going down, the stock market might start going down. So that's a good, that's a good way to kind of predict, not predict, but know if a mm-hmm. recession or a downturn's yeah. coming. Yeah. So that's, that's good that you brought that up. I forgot to touch on that. Um, but yeah, market I think that's update. all we, huh? Market update? Um, yeah, I haven't really looked at anything today yet, but um, I'll just pull it up real quick. Yeah, I mean, everything's closed still. Right. I mean, it's pretty high right now. Um, yeah. Well, highs. I guess big news would be that um, the U.S. and China signed the phase one. phase one trade deal. So that's big news. I don't know how much is going to come from that because it's just, again, it's just initial kind yeah. of like... Agree to talk further. Right, yeah. And I think they they're pulling down the u.s is pulling down some tariffs and china is like agreed to like um, go harder on uh intellectual property violations and things like that so i mean i think they were doing some farming stuff too yeah they agreed to buy some some of the u.s uh, farm products and things like that but again it's phase one i my my opinion on it is they did it to kind of chill the markets out yeah. a little bit and just be like everything's cool over here mm-hmm. um but how much it actually is going to make a difference we'll see maybe they get into phase two and that's like huge but mm-hmm. again could be longer down the line as long as this one like right this one is taken right mm-hmm. yeah but but yeah like you said we shall see yeah we shall see i like to i like to keep the I like to keep the opinion of we shall see, yeah. you know, because like don't get too excited about everything, right? Don't get too depressed about everything. Yeah. Like, nice even keel, right? Demeanor. Exactly. So keep some emotions out of it. Um, yeah. So I I think that about wraps up. You guys got any more questions or comments about finance section? Uh, no, really. No. All right. Let's let's flip the page into the sports section. <laughs> All right, now we're going to move on into the sports section. First up, it's the MLB. We got some cheating scandal going on mm. where uh, the stealing signs of pitchers just hitting bombs off of them. So that's... Got, that's mainly the Astros, right? Yeah, the Astros and then um, the Red Sox ex-head coach now because he's fired. And then... He got fired because of that? Yeah, because he was, like, one of the head people in it at the time. Oh, gotcha. And then you got um, the ex-Mets manager now, who was a player at the time. He was got fired, too. He so, was a player? He was a player on the Astros. So he's pretty young, though, for a manager. He's, like, yeah, but he's, yeah. like, 40-ish. Oh, okay. Late 30s. So, so what, is, what is the scandal? So they, the Astros had a camera out in center field, and they were stealing signs from the pitcher. 
Oh. And then reeling the signs to the batter so they knew what pitch to, was oh. coming. Oh. Yeah, so yeah. Like, getting an advantage. Slight yeah. one. Yeah. So how would the how would the batter, like, they would just... They like, had, like, trash cans, apparently, and they would, like, bang on them uh -huh. to, like, let the hitter know okay. about it. And then they also, like, some people are saying that some of the players had buzzers on their chest uh -huh. where a robot would buzz them, telling them what pitch. Mm. That's wild. Yeah, that's Damn. some advanced shit. But weren't they also, they were doing, like, signals to the batter, right, to tell them? Or was there none of that going That on? was the garbage cans. Oh, okay. Like, as a sound. But, the, like, the third base coach wasn't, like, giving them signals either? No. I mean, if, if it would be someone was giving him signals, it would be, like, the set player on second base. Oh, okay. Already on base. Gotcha. Yeah, so... That's fucking wild. Yeah. It's well, crazy, I mean, man. Anything to get an advantage, I guess. Yeah. But I, I took a class over the summer, and it kind of went into, like, the, um just how like t like sports cheating and all that stuff kind of how it kind of reflects like on society and stuff mm -hmm. like that but yeah um, but yeah it's crazy to see that they went to like that measure to just try and get a upper hand yeah i mean they won the world series that year so the astros did yeah so it could be yeah implications with that i mean yeah if you're getting like if you are that's like knowing somebody's play in football yeah yeah so definitely if you're you already have a leg up you know where to look for the pitch and then you're already kind of anticipating it so easier to hit yeah mm -hmm. did does it like what was their like batting uh average or percentage as a team that year do you know i know i don't know i'm sure it was probably decently yeah. high yeah, yeah it probably went up yeah was... definitely more home runs yeah. than that normally <laughs> it bombs off yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next up we got championship that happened on monday between lsu and clemson go tigers <laughs> that was it was a pretty good game yeah it was a pretty good game for like the first half. three and a half quarters yeah and then lsu started, started pulling away three quarters maybe yeah it looked early in the game because i kind of changed my uh my prediction i thought i would win like middle of the game it was it was looking like clemson was they were holding in. Yeah. Like, they, because um, they were holding LSU's defense or offense, like, that first half, for the, or not the first half, but, like, the first quarter. Mm -hmm. And and the offense was moving, too. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence. I mean, it was around. a battle for, for yeah. like you said, three quarters, and then they kind of pulled away. Joe Burrow just said, yeah. fuck this, I'm winning it. Yeah. yeah, but there was, I think... I think it was like a third down play. They were down like 10 or 13 or some shit. And I was like, if they could stop them here, get the ball back and score, yeah. it, would have been, it would have been a battle to the end. I think. Yeah, but then but there was a, Yeah, there was just a few plays where like, and then their defense started, you could tell their defense started getting a little gassed too. Because yeah, they they're on out the there field for so, so long. long. Yeah. And they just couldn't torched. get off the field on third down. Yeah. Yeah, Jamar Chase was definitely cooking. Yeah. Yes. As usual. He's, he's a monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I was on LSU from the get-go, so yeah, I just wanted to put my claim in there. <laughs> no flip-flop. No question about that. Next up, kind of another no question asked from us was uh, the McGregor and Cowboy oh, yeah. fight. Oh, yeah. 40-second yeah. beatdown. Yeah, that yeah, was... Good God. <laughs> what a waste of money. <laughs> I, I mean, it wasn't a waste you. of money because you got to see the other ones, but... Still, the other ones weren't good. The main, the main event was dis disappointing. Was yeah, I, I wasn't disappointed. I mean, yeah, it, it was a, it was definitely kind of exciting. Um, but I would have definitely liked to see a longer fight. Longer like I wish that would have come at like the end of the fourth round. Yeah, yeah. And then I would be like, all right, that was a great yeah, fight. After you see some he exchanges, <laughs> hit him with the shoulder. But yeah, like yeah. we were talking about earlier, like he was just eating the shoulder yeah. to begin with. Like, yeah. bro, move your head. <laughs> <laughs> that you like you can like I said earlier, you can see in the re like the slow mo replay, he hits him with one. Like he drops down and hits him with one shoulder. And then Cowboys just like keeps his face. I don't think right he there. like McGregor was in the clinch with him. Yeah. I know, but he like you gotta at least much. like lean your head back yeah, or oh, like shit, try to man. get. Well, out if you go back, you're getting shoulder straight to the jaw. 
most but likely. my point is is like you can't just keep your face right well, yeah there. you take shouldn't. another one and another oh, one yeah, after that real. you gotta do something you gotta else then after different. that he got hit with a head kick yep. yeah that, the kick just, ended it it was just all bad for cowboy um i yeah. thought it was gonna be more back and forth a better fight um, a be- definitely a better fight i didn't expect it to just yeah. be like an ass whooping straight out the gate but I mean, McGregor, he starts fast, and he has that you know, tenacity, fast. so, um, yeah. I mean, I've like, never seen somebody use their shoulder before, though. Yeah, yeah me too. That, like, that was, like, the first. Aggressively. Exactly. Something new. That, 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 that was, like, some shit you use, like, in a real, like, street fight. Type. Yeah. You kind of do I that wonder in, like, if boxing. that's going to lead people to, like, start using shoulders. Yeah, more. maybe in, like, if they get, like, a clinch In position. the clinch, yeah. Definitely because yeah. it's McGregor, I feel like. Yeah. 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 People might jump on that. Yeah, for sure. But I, I want to see him fight Mosby, though. I think that'd be yeah. a, a great, a great scrap. And it'd be a great test for McGregor to see if he's really back. Yeah. Cause, I mean, it, it was a good fight for, like, public, publicity. But, I mean, Cerrone, he's fought, like, 50 times. He's kind of on and off, just depending yeah. on, like, which version of him you see. Not to say he doesn't have, like, skill, obviously. But... I mean, that was probably like a tune-up fight to McGregor because last time he had a layoff, they threw him in there with that animal named Khabib. That <laughs> didn't end well for him. So I think oh. they're, this is probably like Connor's, he's probably about, like he said in an interview, he's going to be more active. So, yeah. you know, you got to get him in there with like a little tune-up fight. And then uh, hopefully next yeah, I hope is he, like, as takes Mosby, fight like, Yeah, he doesn't yeah. Like, fight anybody. Like, the thing that I... Uh, I appreciate it about Cowboy is the fact that he'll fight anybody. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't seem like he's afraid of anybody. And Ka- McGregor is definitely afraid of Khabib. Oh, yeah. Like, he got fucking yeah. strangled by that. <laughs> so, I don't know. Like, I don't know if they'll ever fight again. Or oh, at, yeah. at least recently. Like, It'll in probably the be future. in, like, a year or two, I feel like. Yeah, there'll be yeah. some time. But Khabib I mean, has Tony fighting in April. I can't wait for that one. But like like you said, like he could fight Masvidal, he could fight Usman, Usman, he could fight a lot of people. Pacquiao, he could fight Max yeah. Holloway, Dustin Poirier, because yeah. he can go, like we talked about earlier, he's pl- he's fought in three different weight classes. Yeah, right. Uh, featherweight, lightweight, and welterweight. Um, so there's some matchups for him like everywhere. Yeah. Could really. go on Gaethje. There's yeah, a lot Gaethje. of there's a lot of options that he could do. But what I want to see is like him be open to exactly like, take all those fights. Mm-hmm. and like i said in an interview he said that's what he wanted to do so i guess we'll see yeah. he didn't take any damage <laughs> yeah. no, for 40 didn't. seconds <laughs> made it a, a quick i don't know how much he'd walked away with i'm assuming he said he won't feel yeah yeah a lot more than a few. yeah like probably 20 double digits at least probably so it's, i'm guessing yeah like so 12 either way it goes he can definitely get back in there tomorrow if he wanted so yeah like, he could have got in last night again yeah although there is you got to think about the whole process of oh yeah, training, yeah, yeah for game, sure cutting weight 100 you know, promoting the fights yeah 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 there's a lot that goes into it yeah. but but from like a, a beating standpoint he didn't take a beating at yeah. all so like he didn't take any damage like body, i don't he, he could definitely get I don't oh. even think Cowboy threw a he punch. He didn't land no. one because I, the, it was like 19 hits to zero. Like, he didn't get hit. And the one he whiffed on, like, he came out of the gate strong. He whiffed, like, with a left, I think, over Cowboy. And he still hit him with the knee. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Cowboy went down and McGregor came up yeah. with the knee. Like, he kind of looked like he was going for a takedown and yeah. the yeah, knee yeah, just yeah. connected with yeah. him. Yeah. So, that fight was wild, though. Yeah. Quick quick all right next up we're moving to the nfl and the playoffs oh, we got the games come on today. three is the three first o'clock, one yeah. with the titans and the chiefs minus seven favoring kansas city i think the titans are gonna take it <laughs> i just don't think they're gonna I'm stop Derrick henry i mean just... I'll, i would take kansas city to cover I think they're gonna. Oh yeah. More than seven. After what they did last week. Yeah, I mean, that was that was wild. It's all about Derrick Henry. Like, if you stop Derrick Henry, that, but the run Tannehill's defense for, not gonna be run defense for Kansas City is not that's that what good. That's I mean. If they stop him, like Tannehill's yesterday gonna, after the fight, load the box up. that's they were saying when they load the box, they let up an average of four point five or five point four yards a carry mm-hmm. when they load the box. Yeah. So and then you got, got Derrick Henry. Henry. But you also yeah, and then it's all. 
also depends on if um, uh, Tennessee's defense can get off the field. Because yeah. if you let the Chiefs, like, run it up on you and your defense is on the field, you'll get gassed. Yeah. But that's what and then, the Titans are good at, running the clock down, just right. running the ball. So yeah. if they stop Henry and the defense can't get off the field, then yeah. they're fucked. Yeah. yeah. And it's in Arrowhead. Like, mm-hmm. nah, I got Kansas City. I'll take them with the points. Yeah. So I feel like what you guys are kind of pointing to is whoever, like, can decide the pace. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. Kansas yeah. City is a more high-paced offense. So, like you said, if they're able to score a lot of points, yeah. um, then ca- then the Tennessee Titans aren't going to really be able to just run the ball because that's going to be more time-consuming and they're going to have to take right. more shots. And that's really not their strong suit. If that game ends in below 20, like both teams below 20, then I'll take Tennessee. But if it's – I mean, not that I'm picking Kansas City, but I'm saying like if yeah. it ends – with both teams below 20, like, say, 16, 13, 16, 10, something like that, then Tennessee can, has a definite chance to win. If it's above 20 or into the 30s, Kansas City will win because this Tennessee, just I don't see them scoring like that. Right. They're, they're just really one-dimensional to me. Yeah. And they just ran the fuck out of the ball against the Patriots, and then the Ravens, I just thought Lamar Jackson didn't play all that great, and their team just didn't play as well as they played yeah. throughout the season. Yeah, and their defense looked really suspect because yeah. T- Tannehill took some deep shots and yeah, con- and they got burnt on those. So yeah. maybe it's the fact they were kind of too worried about Derrick Henry and sure. coming up for the run. Right. But, I mean, you need to. Right? Tannehill's yeah. only throw- less thrown this- less than 15 passes a game yeah. in the playoffs. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. If you shut down Henry, Tannehill's not going to beat you. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, if he beats me, you got to yeah. just tip the and cap. A, and a lot of his like, passing is play action. Right. So yeah. if it's not, if you're not, like, worried about them running the ball because you're having success stopping it, right. then you're going to be like, oh, if they do throw it, it's going to be off play action. And that's the other thing, too, is, like, you, if Kansas City gets a s- decent lead, then they're going to have to throw the ball mm-hmm. because you just can't run time down like that. Yeah. You're going to have to put the ball in the air and try to get chunk plays. Yeah. And that's what you want if you're Kansas City. You're licking your chops at, at that. Yeah. yeah. I just feel like Tennessee's like the team of destiny for the year. <laughs> or like Could be. I mean, they might pull off some crazy shit. Yeah. But they beat yeah. the – what was the Patriots the second seed in the – Yeah, yeah. The f- uh, third. Oh. Yeah, because it's – Ravens, Chiefs. Oh, yeah. Chiefs are too. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Either way, they knocked off the number one seed, the Patriots, who are always like, kind of like a lock to right. get to the Super Bowl. Well, yeah, not I a mean, lock. I had them but favored to win favorite. it all. But yeah. Patriots. Yeah. But they escaped the first round. <laughs> so then we got the six, probably seven o'clock game, the Packers and Forty Niners. 49ers are favored by seven and a half. I got 49ers. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, I'll have to go with them too. Just home team. Yeah. I, I don't really have any upset picks this weekend, but... Yeah. I think, uh, uh, I think the 49ers win it all. I think the 49ers win specifically this game because it's in San Francisco. Like, yeah. I if it was like in Green Bay with, up. like, this kind of weather... Oh, it'd be over. Yeah. Like, you, I just don't see them winning, but the fact that... Th- it's in San Francisco. I gotta go 49ers. Yeah. But they already have played. Play. And I, I don't think a... the Packers have that great of an offense, like, passing game. They got... I mean, they got Adams, Adams, but then who else? Marcus like, Valdez, Scantley, uh, decent. Allison. I don't know if he's injured or not. Yeah. So, uh, like, and they're, they're decently balanced because they have Aaron Jones. Or is he in? He's the end, right? Yeah, so. Yeah, he's going off he's still. Piece. So, they're all right, but... I keep him in our league. <laughs> And again, that's another deep, good defensive team with uh, what they got, the Bosa brother. Yeah, Joey. Nick. Nick Bosa, Nick's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's a beast. So, yeah, the Niners have a, a pretty solid defense. They have Richard Sherman oh, in the corner, yeah. too. So. Love him. Yeah, their defense has been their like strong suit yeah. throughout the year. And then they're kind of like Tennessee, too, where they just run it, run the clock down. Right. Like, they had a drive last game where they ran it every single time. Yeah. Wow. And got they have, down. like, both teams have, like, no, not hating on Jimmy G, but like he's not fucking Aaron Rodgers. So Definitely like, not. Both nice. both Tennessee and and San Francisco have teams where they depend on the run and they their quarterback will manage the game for you. Like I, he, yeah. Jimmy like, G is definitely better than Tannehill. He's better, but what I'm saying is like they both play the role of 
they're going to manage the game. game. They're not going to turn the ball over. Yeah. And they're just not going to make mistakes. They'll just, yeah, but they're not, not going to make big yeah, plays not, either. Not like, like he'll throw he for like 300. For mm-hmm. But yeah, because um, the 49ers, they have like a nice mix of running backs too. Yeah. With Mostert, Brita, Tevin Coleman. Yeah. Burita. And they got Burita. some solid burrito uh receivers yeah you got kittle at tight end oh, Emmanuel yeah. sanders yes yeah uh goodwin godwin Kid, kittle is a fucking yeah. animal no lie he's no best tight end in the league behind travis kelsey yeah um gonna move on to the damn you think Kel- kelsey's better than him yeah he had like three touchdowns last game okay yeah kelsey is a but Kittle did shit all over um, Minnesota. Yeah. That was dirty. That One was dirty. I'll give Kittle like a year, two years, and then he'll be better. Is he? He's not. He's not a rookie though. No, he's he's like, like three, three years. Three years. Okay. Still on. Yeah. So next is the NBA. We got some trades happening, starting to spark a little bit. Mm. Trade deadline coming up. You got Jeff Teague to Atlanta. Back to Atlanta, huh? Yeah. Where was he before? Timberwolves. Yeah. Was he going to be Trey Young's backup? Yeah. It's... Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if they would move Trey to the two. He's kind of small for that. Yeah. yeah. They got rid of Alan Crabby and some picks, I think. The, the Hawks got players. rid of Alan Crabby? Yeah. And it they was... gave them... Wait. They... So it was got and Crab. the picks? No, it was other players, actually. Oh, okay, okay. Just like... Role players? Yeah. yeah. Bench warmers. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> and then you got Trevor Rizzo. This was yesterday to Portland for Kent Bazemore and picks to the Kings. Kings nice. on the come up. Are they in the Are they in the um, playoff picture right now? Kings. Yeah. I have no idea. What's yeah, I record? thought they were pretty good at that at the beginning of the year. Yeah, they were pretty smooth, but I haven't checked mm. on it in a while. I feel like they're not. No, if yeah. they are, like eighth. No, they're fucking fifteen and twenty-seven. But oh. I swear to God, they they started they, the year like they were above five hundred. Yeah, but now Portland's gonna be. I feel like a the, solid player. If they get a solid player in the draft, because I feel like they have a nice young core to build around. Fox. With Fox. Uh, do they still have Buddy Hield? Yep. Yeah. Just offered uh, him the contract. Marvin Bagley oh, is on their team. They have yep. um, Bogdanovich. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He's Bob. pretty good. Did they probably, get the other? Get did they get the other Bog? There's two Bogdanoviches. One played for, uh, not not. He went to uh, the Jazz. Never mind. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and then the other thing is the fucking Warriors sitting pretty. Probably got to get the, the number one draft pick. <laughs> yeah. And then That's... bring back everybody who's injured. Yes. You know? Plus they could get probably get rid Wiseman. Of... Yeah. If they pick up Wiseman and then bring everybody back next year, they'll be. Get rid of Russell, force. probably trade. Yeah, him. trade Russell for some pieces that like will build around. Yeah, him. like a center maybe. Yeah, that could be good. They have Willie Colley Stein. Not that that really is anything yeah. significant, <laughs> but I mean, if like you <laughs> said, if, if they get James Wiseman and have Willie Colley Stein, they could get, they could move for like a wing right. kind of to replace yeah. Durant because they'll need like another score besides clay and stuff yeah yeah draymond's the utility guy wiseman could be good down low yeah uh, um next up yeah they, they'll definitely have pieces if they which it looks like they're gonna sit down at the bottom of the i wonder what the fucking knicks are at probably not at, great still always at the bottom yeah well the hawks are actually 10 yeah 33, not so. great either and then the knicks mm-hmm. yeah and then Cavs. Yeah, so we'll see. Still a lot of season to play. We got the All Star game coming up. LeBron James leading the way. Taco Fall <laughs> second. Taco nah, you got Luca and Giannis following him up. Yeah, and fuck it. Isn't Caruso up there too? Alex he's like Caruso. number four or five Damn. or some shit like that. Yeah, and the vote's because everybody thinks he's just like, you know, it's just like funny shit. Air Caruso. <laughs> But yeah, not too Did much. Did you see um, where is All Star Weekend at? Um, it was in New Orleans last year, right? I think so. Is it there, or Los Angeles? I don't know. It could be LA. 
It's in Chicago. Oh. Chirac. Damn. Might have to go. Yeah, yeah that was... In February? That's lit. Bruh, I love Chicago. Yeah. It's a dope city. Oh, yeah. Um, let me see. I'm trying to pull up. I'm trying to see where Caruso is in the fucking voting. All right, I'm just going to move on while you look at that. Right. Um, we got a new assist leader all time in the Big Ten. Cash money. Oh, yeah. A final assist to pass. Uh, Routine, please. Yeah, it was Another pretty Spartan nice. dog. Yeah, and he threw that uh, oop to X yep. to get that record. Mm-hmm. Cash is Winston in the next couple of years should have his jersey retired. Yeah, definitely. Like, no, like he he means so much to this program. Like the past two years. Exactly. Like he's me. been like the engine, the heart of the whole team. Yeah. I mean, All right. So, real quick, Caruso has he's like I think he's like number eight altogether, but he's number four in the West Coast or West Western Conference guards. So he's gonna he make it as a backup, pretty much. Eight hundred ninety-four thousand votes. God damn! This is gonna be like uh, D Wade <laughs> like, and uh, yeah, Dirk. Yeah, I mean, Dirk playing been, last like, year. Like they put, like fucking Jokic has eight hundred eighty-nine. So he has more votes than Jokic. Damn, that's like a superstar. Yeah, and somehow Curry has eight hundred nineteen thousand. He's not even gonna play. Yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> what if it's like Seth Curry? <laughs> oh, no, no. There's no Steph, way it Steph, is. Stephen Curry, yeah. Stephen Curry. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, John Morant's getting some. I, so, I want one of his jerseys. One of those Vancouver ones. John Morant. Ooh, that boy's is. That would be cold. Them, uh, like they're like teal or yeah. whatever color that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, them boys are tough. I definitely would cop one of those. Oh, yeah. So. Winston's keeping it in the family. Yes. With assist. And then we got another, like, record broken. Not a great one, but uh, Vanderbilt loses <laughs> their 1,080th game streak of hitting at least one three-pointer. It was kind of funny watching the fans <laughs> kind of go crazy about not hitting it. Yeah. I wonder how they knew, like. Yeah. They probably they had they to announce it. The record. Yeah, that's, that's, was that the long? That's, that's the longest, a long ass. Record. But that was the longest ever. I don't know. Oh. I don't. It's, it's just, like a thousand games. Yeah, that's that's few, nuts. like a decade at least. Yeah, they shot that's over like, twenty five, and the last yeah, one, like they showed on sports like, last night. Yeah, it like rimmed in and out, and then bounced out. I that's like, oh my <laughs> God, dude. That's so tough. It wasn't meant. No. Yeah. That's just. They had some open ones too. Like, yeah. <laughs> Bad night for them. All right, and then we're moving on to the final thing for sports. Top five. We're doing top five college quarterbacks of the last decade, going oh. back to 2010. This is quite a discussion. All right. I mean, go I, I kind of just ahead. did... 2010. I kind of just did Heisman winners, because, like... Okay, yeah. But, like, I also... Fair. I don't know if anyone isn't. I got no in no particular order. It's Lamar Jackson. It's top five. You gotta do an order. All right, I I don't know yet. I'm I might put Burrow number one. Damn. Okay. Just because of the year he had. Yeah. The amount of touchdowns he threw is insane. Yeah. Um. This is of the last decade, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Okay. It's not too tough. You said QBs. Yeah. And then next, after Burrow, I'm going to put Johnny Manziel. What? Just, he played pretty good at Texas. Yeah, and um, uh, Cam Newton, I'm going to put next after a third. He's just a big yeah, boy. Yeah, he's a beast. Can do whatever he wants. Oh, and then RG3, who's yeah. solid in college. And to finish it off at five, I got Lamar Jackson. I don't know if those are good, like a good order or anything, but yeah, it's kind of what I'm feeling. I'd say mine go Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, um, RG3, uh, uh, who 
else? Who else? Who else? I guess she, I guess Johnny Manziel is is a solid four, and then I'd go Deshaun Watson. Oh yeah, Watson oh, too. Oh shit! He never won a Heisman. No. Yeah, I'll, 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 I forgot about. I'll him. probably go. He won a national championship though. That's true. I'll probably go. I might put Watson at one. Mm. I mean, yeah. And then I wouldn't Bama. put him at one over a Heisman winner though. Yeah, that's but fair. To each his own. I'd go. No, I'd go. Jesus, this is tough. Um, no, I'm gonna go Watson at one. Then two, I'd go. Oh shit, Burrow. I guess he had a great year. Um, three. I don't even know Cam Newton maybe, but there's a lot of people. There's a lot of good quarterbacks that yeah. didn't win Heisman. Right. Yeah. Like fucking obviously Watson, um, Jalen Hurt. Jalen Hurts never won a Heisman. Right? Mm-hmm. He's still playing or not? No, he just finished yeah. his last year. He's, he's all right quarterback. I don't, yeah. I don't think he's that. I mean, he's not some special this year though. Yeah. You can tell he plays a normal team, yeah. and then he gets yeah. demolished. And then if he has to throw the football. Yeah. So. As a quarterback. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Watson. Um, what did I say? Cam Newton. Joe yeah, Burrow. Newton. Oh yeah, yeah. Burrow. Uh, Newton. Kyler Murray. I'd say Baker is better than Kyler. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, so I'll go Baker at four. I'm not putting no. And then Baker five, I'll go. I'll go. Um, yeah. Lamar Jackson. All right. I don't know. It's tough though, cause like they're the, all. Different. They're all good and yeah. they're all different and they like all the Big Twelve quarterbacks have great stats. Yeah, that, like, yeah you got it's you got some context. inflation there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like perfect word for it. Yeah. So, all but right. that's why I'll go. I'll go Watson, Burrow, um, Cam Newton, and then my four was I'll go Baker Mayfield and then Lamar Jackson five. Damn. So. All right. Anything else? No. All right, that wraps it up, and we're going to flip it to (coughs) personal wellness with TC. All right, so to wrap up with the last segment of physical wellness, uh, the topic we're going to be covering is fasting. So um, for people that don't know what fasting is, the dictionary definition is um, the willing abstinence or reduction of some or all food, drink, or both for a period of time. So basically, just going without um, food, um, eating. Yeah, no, no eating. Um, there's, there's. Um, we'll get into the different types of fasting, but there's also fasts that include no drink. Mm. So um, a lot of people do it for different reasons, um, but yeah. So the types of fasting. There's intermittent fasting. So a lot of times people will fast for like a set period of time like a long period of time say 24 hours or on like multiple days Mm -hmm. so but intermittent fasting is the breaking up of the fasting so you go say 16 hours or 12 hours or however many hours without eating and then you have something to eat and then you uh, go fast again so it's intermittently um fasting rather than just one uh, group of time right and most that, of the time that lo- those like uh, multiple day ones are like pr- religious for religious yeah. reasons yeah. right so yeah a lot of kids in school like we, yeah we went uh, to school yeah did that. like um i think it was like people that are of the muslim religion yeah, yeah. um was it like ramadan or something like that i, I don't, don't really know, know it's, what it's, it's like in the spring i think yeah, I think it's in the spring. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm talking yeah. on my ass a little bit. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, for, yeah. mo- for the most part, those ones that are, like, de- day on days on days mm-hmm. are, like, um, for religious reasons. And I think that y- you're allowed to eat, but not until, like, late at, late night. at night. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's kind of, like, an example of intermittent fasting, whereas, like, a... a, a just a regular fast would be days on end Uh um but i mean even besides religious reasons a lot of people fast for health reasons and we'll go over that in the when we talk about the benefits of them but just getting back into the different types of fasts there's juice fast so 
um, you don't eat any solid food, mm. uh, you'll probably drink water. Um, but then you're just using juices as your meal as your meals. So like um, raw juice from like like vegetables mm, and okay. fruits, um, not like a fucking apple juice or yeah. stuff like that. And then there's dry fasting. Wait, so is that like you throw it in a smoothie or like... like So, me personally, I have a a juice machine. So, you just will put like cucumbers, um, celery, spinach, like just a bunch of different uh, vegetables. And that um, extracts like a lot of the nutrients, like a lot of the nutrients are in that, uh, the juice. So you're just like drinking straight, right. like, just juice. Like there's no added sugars right, or anything right, like right. that. And that that is good for your system. And it's good for, a lot of people do uh, fast to detox. Okay. So like you're giving your system a break from having to um, break down food and digest food. So you're giving it time to, you know, regenerate and uh, get rid of all the waste and, you know, cleanse the system. Gotcha. So there's ju- there's juice fasting and that's kind of why people do juicing because it kind of helps with mm-hmm. the breakdown and then also you're getting nutrients rather than not um, just going without anything for a period of time. Gotcha. Then there's dry fasting, which is no water, no food, and that's probably where you'll find most of the religious mm-hmm. fasts. Um, and then there's water fasting where it's just no food, but you can drink water. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so a lot of people would wonder, well, why am I trying to go without food? Because right. I love food. But yeah, like we just mentioned, I love food. <laughs> I, I mentioned before, your body, you don't always have to eat. It's a, a misconception that when your when your stomach's growling or whatever, whatever you you have to eat, and that's just not the case because, like I said, your body needs time to regenerate, and you know. Uh, go through like the cycle of getting like waste out because think about it if you're eating so many meals and a lot of people are eating super large portions and eating a ton too so that's not giving your like your body's backed up right. and you're you, just constantly running the system exactly the and then like if you don't shit a lot then it's still <laughs> <laughs> it's still in you yeah, you're not really getting rid of the waste right. and then your body's not able to operate at its you know most optimized efficiency it's sort of like just run in a car and overdrive exactly but with constant gas coming exactly in, you know? and that's what you got to treat your body as, as a machine as a as a vehicle and if yeah. you yeah. if your check engine light or you need your oil change all that shit like your car's obviously not going to run at right. peak performance so if you just think about your body like that um it really has its benefits and we'll go into some of that right now um so some of the research i gathered um when you're fasting, there's a significant reduction in blood sugar and insulin levels, nice. as well as a drastic increase in the human growth hormone. So HGH um, helps to maintain, build, and repair healthy tissue in the brain and or other organisms. So like I said, it's more of like a- Focus on that regeneration. Yeah, yep. that regeneration and repair because your body, like I said, your body is co- always constantly working. Mm-hmm. So if you give it that much needed rest from having to spend the energy breaking down the food that mm-hmm. you've been eating, it can spend, it can devote its energy towards, you know, repairing mm-hmm. cells and, you know, building your body up. Um, also, like I said, it initiates important cellular repair processes. So things that are like necessary for your body to, you know, maintain mm-hmm. its um, itself. Uh, some research also suggests that it can help protect against diseases, mm-hmm. including heart disease, type two diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, and others. So that just kind of goes back to, you know, a lot like in the example I said, if you're doing the preventative maintenance on your car, like getting your oil change when you need it, making sure you do all the repairs necessary, then it's gonna obviously run efficiently. And in the case of the human body, you won't get diseases if you're taking care of it. And if you're taking you know, every opportunity you can to make sure you're cleansing your body out of all the waste. And cause there's a lot of toxins and stuff in the food that we eat. All that processed Exactly, shit. the processed food. If you look at the back of a label of a lot of things that we eat, like you won't even be able to pronounce half the words. Yeah. So it's like, 
if you you got like yeah you can eat that sometimes but just be a, be mindful to get rid of that waste so it's not just building up and building up yeah um so yeah like i said it it prevents those type of diseases especially diabetes which is kind diabetes of diabetes <laughs> which is which is like caused um by just like bad eating habits mm -hmm. so um so yeah uh fasting is a form of cleansing in the sense that it allows your body to digest and detoxify like i said earlier removing waste from your body and cells um and then this also benefits not only your body but also like your cognitive function like your mental because obviously your mind and your body are like kind of all one so if you're doing something that's benefiting your your body you're going to see the same like benefits are going to trickle to your brain as mm -hmm. well and how your cognitive function is um so um and then also people fast uh for weight loss so obviously if you're not eating you're not taking in calories right. and if you do some you know some sort of exercise while you're on a fast you um you're having you're operating at a calorie caloric deficient deficit deficit, yeah. <laughs> deficit. Yeah. so um, so you, obviously you're lo you're losing weight. Yeah, you're burning calories and not taking. Them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's what a lot of people would probably like if you're trying to lose weight you'll go on a fast or just slow down on your eating but fasting is is good. Uh, several studies show that intermittent fasting may enhance the body's resistance to oxidative stress. And this type of stress is like what causes like aging and oh, okay. um and stuff like that so like stress isn't good for the body at all mm -hmm. um so if you can you you know re resist that and you know lower the amount of stress the more healthy your body will be um i would say i would say i agree with you but also there is some stress that's good Whereas, like, for example, like, taking on um, things that are going to challenge you is technically stress, like lifting yeah. weights, things like that. Yeah. So you're stressing your body, but it's, like, at the end of the day, or at the, the end result is, like, you get stronger, you're, you're exercising, yeah, you're yeah. burning calories. No, yeah. That, so, but, but from a, the standpoint of, like, unneeded stress or, like, just stress that's not getting Oxidative, you to an end, yeah. end goal, yeah. that I agree with you, but... Just unneeded. Some yeah. is good. Yeah, like you said, unneeded stress is mainly what it's kind of what I'm more referring to. Sure. Because, like, like you said, challenging yourself and doing stuff that's hard, yeah, it's gonna be stressful for sure. But like, there's good stress. Right. So, um, additionally, um, it'll it'll help fight inflammation, and that's kind of what inflammation is. What allows like a lot of disease in your body. So it'll it'll like slow the inflammation and, the, and just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that that's kind of like a lot of the uh, benefits of fasting. And like I said, it improves your cognitive function. And I know for me, my personal experience, I haven't fasted in a little second, and that's something I'm definitely getting gonna get back to. But when so I was, when you did what, like, what was your routine? Did you go like sixteen on to eight off, or like? So the first time I tried it, I did just a, like a two day fast. Mm -hmm. So I was shooting for three days, but I I caved in on the second day. <laughs> um, That's tough though. Two days is fucking yeah, long. That's it's a time. long time. But it also helps with your discipline. Mm, yeah. So there's true. there's also that benefit in like the self-control mm -hmm. self-discipline aspect to where if you can go without food which i mean everybody loves to eat and <laughs> the smell of food can make you just want to you know go in, <laughs> go so, in. exactly so yeah. if you can resist that because you know you're on a fast and you you have that discipline then it has that benefit as well mm -hmm. but in my first that first fast i did a two-day and it was a it was just a, a just water fast i wasn't eating i didn't do juice fast um, but i have done a juice fast and i can touch on that after but yeah the first fast i did it was just a water fast for a couple of days and i, I felt the like mental clarity like my body felt you know high energy because mm -hmm. like i said 
your body isn't like spent spending all this energy digesting food right, right. it's repairing itself and you can you can feel that um but also before i go into juice fasting like if you if you do do a fast it's good to when you break your fast uh don't do it with like don't pig out or anything like that you should <laughs> just fucking go something. in that's yeah smaller, it's right? smaller and then like probably like some fruits or vegetables something like that right. that'll you know get them nutrients back into you and that's that's really how you fast correctly because then you'll start to really um achieve like the the real results of the fast mm -hmm. but um like i said i did a juice fast so i would drink um like a juice in the morning um and the juice like around lunchtime and then for dinner and then of course you're drinking water in between mm -hmm. so i did that for a couple of days i think like three two or three i can't remember it's been a while i need to get back on it but mm -hmm. um but yeah that i could definitely feel the benefits of that too just like cognitively and my body physically i could feel like the energy so I mean, I feel like a lot of people just aren't really as hip as they should be on fasting because they're like, damn, I can't eat nothing. But yeah. it's like, it's, it's a little bit more than that. Yeah. <laughs> just not not eating. Things. Exactly. There's a lot of that goes into it. Yeah. But what are you guys, what are some of your guys' thoughts on, on fasting? I think, I think it's definitely beneficial. I, I did it um, just like out of necessity the fact that we didn't have groceries like a lot yeah. of times yeah. have groceries and I don't want to eat like like a you know Total like a fast tart food. for breakfast or some shit I'll just skip breakfast right and I'll try to make it to like I shoot for like noon mm -hmm. but sometimes I can get to like one or two and mm -hmm. then that's when I eat but the only thing is is like like you mentioned is like I fucking when I break it I just go in yeah. and just like eat like too much and then I'm like what was the point you right know? Yeah. Like, so that would be one thing that i would probably need to work on is just not like chilling it like Over chilling indulgence. Out. yeah um but but i like to do it like just skipping breakfast because you mm -hmm. don't really need to eat breakfast yeah, yeah most yeah. of the time you eat like not good shit exactly you eat, like, like you grains. said pop tarts yeah pop tarts or like sugar cereal yeah so yeah, that's really bad for you and that's yeah. a good way to do it and then i'll just um, come home. I, I got out of this was last semester, so I was getting out of work at like two or yeah two, and then I just come home and eat a sandwich, and then I'd fucking like just go in, eat yeah. a lot of bullshit. But it was good. I mean, it wasn't too. The thing is, is like the first couple of days, it's like damn, I'm hungry as fuck. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry, quote unquote, yeah, yeah, as yeah. fuck. And then it's just like after like the a week or like maybe four days, you're like it's all good like i'm yeah. not really that hungry. exactly i don't need to eat and i'm glad you said quote unquote because like you're not really hungry yeah. it's like your mind kind of tells you you're hungry but right. technically like you can definitely go longer without yeah, food yeah, yeah. so it's like once you um you once you do a fast you really start to see how like your how often you do need to eat because right. you'll be able to tell when you're right. really needing a food yeah. and the other times it's just uh i could eat like bored eating right so an important caveat to make is that it's not about like pushing your body to the absolute yeah, max extreme. and not eating for like 18 days like oh, yeah, you, yeah. you can't do that you'll no. die but yeah. like <laughs> you know not eating for like a long ass time it's it's more about like trying to find that balance and not overeating mm. because even in like an average life you're overeating all the yeah time. yeah for sure like portions are way too big mm -hmm. and people eat like four or five six times a day yeah, yeah. like straight meals that yeah many times. And, and that's fine if you're like bulking up or like mm -hmm. you know you're trying to add add weight but but also if you're ex exercising too right to burn yeah a and lot you're of eating the right off. stuff yeah too. so it's not about it's you you got to find that balance between like eating too much mm -hmm. which everyone does and um fucking like being anorexic yeah like you that's not the goal the goal is to just kind of it's tone just, it back a yeah little it's bit. just to optimize like your body's health system for sure you yes. gotta reset exactly right, right that's and that's really what it is like will said it's a, a reset so like if you've been picking out just go on like a and i this is what i suggest just start off with like a little 24 hour fast like mm -hmm. you can go a day without eating like, yeah yeah that's that's all about like willpower like okay mm -hmm. i'm not gonna eat i'll just drink a bunch of water because a lot of times if you're hungry and you drink some water 
then yeah. you'll be like you won't really be as hungry right mm -hmm. so like will said the reset and just to, the cleanse and to detoxify your body of all the toxins that are in it from overeating all the time and like we're not it's not like we're overeating grapes or right. salad yeah. <laughs> we're overeating uh chips. french fries yeah, yeah, yeah. chips processed foods. just a bunch of processed foods and artificial sugars mm -hmm. and hopefully through this um this human nutrition class that i have i'll be able to learn more about that right. to where i'm like be able to bring a lot more value on the nutrition side and sure. give more you know mm -hmm. tips on like exactly what you should be feeding your body and all that other stuff but it, it's just a good tool to use because people have been fasting since like the beginning of time and it yeah. was like either out of necessity like you said you right. didn't if you don't have food like in back in the day it's not like you had a grocery store down the street or anything so um so yeah like fasting is is i feel i feel like it's necessary for if you're if you want to be more health conscious and if you want to operate at the at your full potential sure mm -hmm. definitely yeah. i agree but yeah so like i said i just suggest um starting off with like a, a 24 hour uh and if you need to you know the day before go ahead get everything out get like pick out if you want and then just just take the day and just you know just be all right with just drinking water and flushing your system because it's necessary and you'll definitely feel the benefits after and then you'll want to start doing it on a more consistent basis right so one thing i want to start doing is like kind of doing it more on like a weekly basis my brother does it like on wednesdays um so i mean maybe even like every other week or something or a couple days out of the month to just just get myself on like a set routine and then i also want to start juicing more so that's just something for me personally sure. that i plan on you know doing just to help my body out because bang some conrads last night yeah. and just ate some cheese curry <laughs> at 2 30. oh and another thing is like stop eating before bed because yeah. that's not good either yeah. going to sleep Should with a full stomach it just sits in there and then you're not burning calories or and anything and it's never like good stuff like exactly. yeah. nobody eats fucking <laughs> a salad at 2 30. Yeah. Right. eating fucking conrads some or greasy conrads <laughs> but yeah i mean uh, I mean, uh, but yeah, yeah, I like it. All right, so that like pretty much wraps everything up. You say? Yeah. So yeah. make sure to follow us on all the platforms. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and then you can um, comment anything you have for us. Any questions, comments? Suggestions. Put it there. Yeah, suggestions. Yeah, and if you have anything that you want us to cover, or if you have, any, like they said, any questions, feel free to reach out to us either on our social media um, pages or comment on our YouTube channel. Yep. The social media will be linked in the description, just so you know. Yeah, so thanks again for uh, listening to episode three of the paper. Uh, tune in to our next episode.